Let's turn our Bibles to 1 Peter chapter 2. Before we look at the fifth verse, I would like to talk to you about worship this morning. You and I were created to worship God. God describes himself as the one who is seeking people to worship him. You and I are worshipers this morning. But there are a lot of distractions to worship. There are a lot of hindrances to worship. And in our text this morning, 1 Peter 2 and verse 5, we'll see one of the reasons all the believers around us this morning are here. They're here to help in the process of building us into a worshiper of God, a temple of worship to God. When Jesus was here on earth, he spoke with a woman. Do you remember the woman at the well? And he said, you don't know what you're worshiping because salvation is of the Jews. But there's a time coming when you will be able to worship God in spirit and truth anywhere. We're in that time. And we're in the most wonderful time. And those of us who have been born again, those of us who have turned toward Christ in faith, and as he saves us, turn away from our sin and our past unto him, become instruments of worship to him. I hope you're growing in your worship. First Peter 2 and verse 5, because you also, as living stones, are being built up. That's our word. Built up is the word edify. Now remember, we're in a process of looking at edification. That's all part of the soundness and the faith, the health of the church. How do we keep the church healthy? God says there's two ways. You mend those who are in disrepair, and once you mend those, that's called equipping, you edify them. That means you build them up and you help them to become more fully a worshiper of the Lord. So look at the, the run-up here. He says, you also, verse 5, as living stones, before we were saved, we were not worshipers, we were dead like little rocks on the ground. But when we were saved, we became a living stone. After we're saved and become that living stone, in the context of the church, verse 5 says, we are being built up. We are in the process of the people around us when we struggle and fall and things go wrong and our, you know, our, our little wagon gets off in the ditch. Others pull us out and help us along in the body of Christ so that, keep reading in verse 5, we are a spiritual house. The only way we can offer worship this morning in this place is to be a spiritual house. When we are unspiritual, when we are not walking in the Spirit, when we are not doing what we're going to see Peter chronicling in a moment, we can't offer acceptable worship. In order to offer worship to God as he desires, we need to be a part of a lifelong building project that God has. Now this word for building up is a word for construction. It's for building, as in a building, or the home. And there have been some amazing building projects in history. I just was thinking about some of the greatest. Uh, Aren't we glad Noah built the ark? That's how he saved his household, and all of us are his descendants. Aren't you glad that, that Herod built that great big temple in Jerusalem, one of the great wonders of the ancient world, so that Jesus Christ could come and teach and perform all the wondrous things he did there? There are a lot of great things built. One of the only you can see from... The space is the Great Wall of China. That's such a large structure that, or so long, you can see it from space. But you know what the greatest construction project of all times was and still is? Not the interstate highway system, even though that was truly one of the greatest construction projects mankind's ever endeavored to do, putting hundreds of thousands of miles of engineered road all across our land. The greatest building project is what's going on here right now this morning. Jesus Christ has put each one of us who are saved into his church and surrounded us with a lifelong process of being built up to be better worshipers of him. That's the greatest building project of all time. And the greatest construction project began 2,000 years ago, and it's the longest running. God has been building up Christ's church using gifted workers. Now, how do we build up one another? God says every single one of us have a blend of, of seven specific skill sets or spirit-empowered giftedness. Those seven combining together are what God believes is needed to accomplish us becoming effective, lifelong worshipers. There's an old hymn we used to sing when I was little. It was called, O to be like thee. O to be like thee, blessed Redeemer, this is my constant longing and prayer. There's one line in there, though, that I love. It says that we are to be fitted for life and service above. 
All that we do within the context of the church is to fit us, to build us up to be greater, more, more earnest offers of worship to the Lord. 